Hello and welcome to today's reflection. Sometimes it feels hard to be thankful when the nights are getting longer and the days are getting colder and wetter. And it's not just the repeated Atlantic, Atlantic storms that are sweeping in, but the, that big storm of the, the second wave of the pandemic threatens both our physical and our mental health. So let's see what encouragement we can receive from our Bible passage today. We continue with the the second half of Psalm 147, and I'm going to read from verse 12. I stole the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise your God, Zion. He strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your borders and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. He sends his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He spreads the snow like wool and scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? He sends his word and melts them. He stirs up his breezes and the waters flow. He has revealed his word to Jacob, his laws and decrees to Israel. He has done this for no other nation. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. As Nicola mentioned yesterday, it seems that this psalm was written after a remnant of God's people had returned from that exile in Babylon and began to be able to worship again in Jerusalem. Under the leadership of Nehemiah, they began to rebuild the temple and the city walls around Mount Zion, the hill on which Jerusalem was built. God, in his mercy, gives Nehemiah and his people success, despite considerable threats and opposition, and they managed to complete the city's defences. So when the psalmist writes, It stole the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise your God, Zion. He strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. You Strengthening the bars of the gates of Jerusalem is, is talking about God's protection of his people. And he grants peace to your borders and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. There may be one or two listening to this who can remember World War II. And the threats to the borders of this country and the rationing. But for most of us, we only know what that must have been like from others. But it's when we remind ourselves of what it was like. It makes us all the more thankful for the blessings this country has of peace and and plentiful food. They are blessings from God. Yet now we, we still face storms in life. And the next part of the psalm talks about an unusual storm that it seems the writer had experienced. He sends his command to the earth, his word runs swiftly. He spreads the snow like wool, he scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? For us in the north of England, snow, frost, hail and icy cold winds are are not uncommon. But for those living around Jerusalem, it's less frequent. More of a shock to the system when storms like that happen. But it's often the times that we face these shocks and challenges that we realise that we are weak and frail. You know, we can't control the weather. But the amazing truth is that God is in control, even in these storms. And in his mercy, he not only controls the storms, but he, he brings them to an end. He sends his word and melts them. He stirs up his breezes and the waters flow. Let's pray that God will do the same in relation to the icy storm of our current pandemic threatening the world. He would send his word and melt the ice, bring it to an end. God is in control. He speaks and and things happen. And our psalm ends with a reminder that The Lord speaks not just a command to put things into action, but also to communicate. 
He wants to live in a relationship with his people. He has revealed his word to Jacob, his laws and decrees to Israel, and he has done this for no other nation. They do not know his laws. God doesn't just reveal his power, majesty and mercy in nature, some, what's sometimes called general, re, general revelation, but also he's revealed his character by speaking, speaking to people like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, the prophets. This is sometimes called special revelation. He called the people of Israel to be his people, to be his special people. He spoke to them, he gave them his, his laws, his statutes. Of course, there's no room for pride here. And perhaps there's a reminder in this psalm that he says he revealed his word to Jacob. You know, Jacob was the original name that Israel had. You know, Israel was the name God gave him. But Jacob was his original name. And, and Jacob was a very flawed person. In fact, the name Jacob means deceiver. But I suspect there's a hint of that flawed character here by the use of the name Jacob. But yet God, in his mercy, kept his promise to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and blessed their descendants. But that's a blessing from God. There's no room for pride and there's no room for pride in, for God's people. For although they were to be a, a light, they received God's light, they were also to be a light to the nations around them. Christians are called to be God's new special people, his new Israel. Although we like Jacob are all flawed. I pray that this psalm would be an encouragement to us to trust him, to trust him in the icy storms of life. He is a God who's revealed his character, character of mercy, and can use us to reveal that character of mercy to those who are in particular need at this time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are in control. We pray for your gracious hand on all those seeking to bring an end to the, the pandemic. May you act to bring it to an end. And for those in the, the thick of the storm at the moment, we pray for your protection. In your mercy, give them hope and trust in you. Amen.